Doctors love you. Doctors love all of you. Let's pray for Docker. And now, and now we will have a prayer by, by our father, Mike Stefanski. Thanks. Greetings uh, uh, from Lviv. I came here from Lviv. I was going to tell you how to make uh, setting up doc, uh, Ruby development environment easy. Really easy. And uh, not dependent on what operating system actually you run. What, what problems are you facing when setting up a uh, Ruby uh, development environment? I suppose the first one everybody faced is different Ruby versions for different applications. It can be solved with uh, tools like RPM, RPM, etc. But it leads to system role. For example, if you have 10 versions of Ruby hanging around, uh, hundreds and hundreds of gem in each version of Ruby, it's very slow. Complex setup you may have uh, long, long, long scripts to set up your environment and can behave differently in different operation systems. It's very hard to do it across the operation systems. And the, another thing is managing native dependencies. Uh, when talking about native dependencies, I don't mean only the gems that depend on some libraries, compiled C libraries. I also mean database servers and uh, the different stuff. We don't have tools like MySQL VM, Postgres VM, Redis VM. We need to check how our application works with different uh, versions of database servers. We do not want to reinstall MySQL just to try whenever your application works perfectly with new versions. Docker is to rescue. Docker can help you with that. That's my toolkit for painless Docker development. It's Docker, the container engine. It's Docker Compose. We have to group together uh, Docker applications. Docker machine way to provision and uh, manage the remote Docker machines. And track. It's a reverse process. Docker. Way to package application in simple, portable chunks, together with native, uh, necessary native libraries. You pack it all together, you have one binary, and you can transfer across your machines and just run. All you need on your machine is Docker runtime. Sample Docker file for Rails. Interesting thing is a Docker file for uh, Rails tutorial app. As you can see, you have a number for me. It was weird that this number of specialized dependencies spend around 15 minutes to figure out how to install them on uh, Mac OS. When you have this Docker file, all you need is just installing the Docker, pulling out this Docker file, uh, you can write Docker build, Docker run, and you are good to go. Docker consoles. The way I uh, started using Docker was actually not terrorizing the application itself. It was terrorizing the uh, database servers, Redis, etc. I suggest you start, when you're starting uh, using Docker, you should start from the appendices. What is Docker Compose? Two running multi container applications, grouping them together. Depends relationship uh, relationships between containers. You can uh, set what part of your application depends on what another part. You can just <coughs> project dependencies in Docker Compose down. 
Here is an example for the infrastructure for application that depends on Postgres, Redis, and Elasticsearch. Here we using the uh, images from Docker registry, and we are exposing <coughs> external ports. So you can use, you can connect to the uh, Postgres as it was running locally. No extra steps need. Just run. You can also set the protections for your database server or another service inside the AMB file. Here is how you run it. You can run the infrastructure in Docker and run your application as you would normally. So you can run uh, all these Docker Compose with that command and run Rails and you're good to go. What if you want to persist it? If that Docker Compose, if you write Docker Compose down, all the data will get lost after you uh, delete the, the, those containers. You can bind mount directory in your host machine to the to contain. I uh, like to define all those uh, bind mounts inside separate file. You can stack Docker Compose file to redefine the some values inside that. So by default this infrastructure will run with non-persistent state. But when you use this extra file, Docker Compose Persistent AS YAML, it will save the uh, database files into database directory, Redis files into Redis directory, and oh, Elasticsearch into ES directory. Then you can, if you want to clean up your setup, you just delete this directory and restart. You will start from scratch. There is how you run. You can call these files any way you want. But it's better to have some conventions for naming them. Then you can set up an alias for running these commands. And whatever your project are you running, Docker Compose we will use the same thing. Let's add an app. Pretty simple. Yet another Docker Compose file with an app. The interesting thing that you can share in the files, so you, they never go out of sync. You have no uh, reason to add database user manually or something else. But you will have an extra file to define environment variables for your application. It's a host for a database. Inside the Docker Compose, you can use the name of the service as a host name to connect. Pretty simple. All you have to do is replace inside your database YAML the actual URL of the database host with uh, ERP. Uh, expansion of this environment variable. Then you can run it. Right here, the first part of the first command is a uh, uh, Rails rate database tasks that runs inside that container. You don't have to run exactly just the same container can create any type of sidecar, so-called sidecar containers, they can do some setup. For example, we had uh, we used CouchDB once, it requires loading and use into CouchDB server. It would be a perfect uh, way to run this task for inside separates the car container. And later we can run the app. Docker machine. Docker machine is the way to provision and uh, 
manage the remote Docker uh, box. As you know, Docker is a client server protocol. It has a client server API that can be managed remote. It can use SSH to provision any type of host with a large number of uh, operation systems. It will install Docker, it will install Docker Compose to generate certificates for uh, remote connection to transfer uh, those uh, certificates to the local machine. All you have to do is run this script. The uh, Dollar machine name is environment variable. You can set prior to running all those commands. And you can run Docker or Docker Compose uh, to control remote uh, machine as you would do in your local, local install. Any oh, one uh, thing is uh, any poor or volume mappings will take effect on remote machine. So if you create a uh, provision that Docker calls into Say digital ocean droplet, we will have to connect to that droplet, not to localhost. The issue is with volume mapping. The thing that I showed you in persistent bind mounts won't run in if you are using local machine. We will have to transfer files to the remote machine or mount some directory via SSI. SSH FS to edit local traffic. To wrap the reverse proxy for Docker containers. It can use Docker labels to set up proxy rules. It can give you a setup like Pumatev server and can run several applications on same port, on same uh, host, uh, they will be differentiated by host name. So there is, I prefer to run traffic in a separate Docker Compose uh, setup. I run it uh, <coughs> separate. All I want to define is separate network, as you can see here. To create network called props. Right. And later, what I need to use it is to add Oh, there is some extra setup for uh, infrastructure. I need to define by hand network. So it will be get created when I run the whole thing. And what I need to do to get it running is to add two networks, one internal for infrastructure, for database servers, for Redis, for everything else, and one network for proxy, just for an app. And also I need to add a few labels that will help traffic to see that this particular container should be mapped to the following post. Anything that would be requested with that host name will get into that container. All for me, the impressions. Okay, we don't have microphones, so I will ask. I can take. Okay, so my question will be something a little more complicated. So we had uh, a feature. So we wrote down our own small CMS. It was in PHP, and it was called e-commerce websites. 
And uh, when we decided, so the idea was that each user, user can authenticate our system, uh, create his own e-commerce platform, and deploy it somewhere on subdomain or domain as he wants. So the idea is that we have one parent application and a lot of e-commerce applications. And most of part of these applications, they had low load because uh, it's uh, like small business, they don't have like a lot of customers, it's more about like, let's imagine 10 customers per day. Uh, and when we decided to make our infrastructure, we decided about, we thought about using Docker for each separate instance, but we faced an issue that for each separate instance we need to set up a separate PHP uh, processor, so like some kind of uh, PHP interpreter and so on, and separate MySQL instance. And my question will be about, uh, so, we face the situation that it uh, requires a lot of uh, um, hardware to support all of these infrastructures, because maybe each instance of MySQL, MySQL and uh, PHP takes around 300 uh, megabytes of uh, RAM memory. And my question is about whether it's, uh, whether it's a good idea to use Docker in such case, Maybe we used it improperly. Is there any a way how we can make shared instances of PHP and MySQL but still have several several different containers for each code base? So, do you, can you comment anything about such case whether it's okay or not to use Docker in such case? We have a valid database with no problems. If you like to have single instance of database, you can have. For different containers of the Yeah, for case. different containers. As I showed here, for reverse proxy, you have to define a network for your database. It will be single instance of database server. You have to Add this network to the list of networks in each container and try to figure out what will be the API address of uh, that container. I suppose that for such complicated peels, pure Docker will not be enough. We'll have to use something, something like Kubernetes. How, how it's called again? Kubernetes. Kubernetes. Tool for registering Docker containers. For much, much simpler, we use this kind of deployment for demo the application, where we need to, to spin up the demo server where in a matter of minutes. Instead of hours, if we do it using VM. Yeah. Even with all provisioning, it will take not less than 30 minutes. With Docker, you can spin up maybe in five, okay. including the creation of your server. Okay. For, uh, for what reason do you split this configuration into a different YAML file? Is it yeah, you can uh, like to run your application locally, maybe. Maybe you don't want to persist data in each session. So if you don't want to persist, you just add infrastructure and load server locally. If you don't want to persist and want to load up besides your infrastructure, but don't want to persist, you include two files. If you want to run up, persist, you run all the three files, compose them. Second. You can have three different files, but if you want to make change somewhere there, you will have to change three files. And if you want to update the version, for example, of MySQL, here you have to update a single file. You can go further with that install, you can create separate file that will overwrite the version, the image of the table. 
to try our application with newer or older version of the cell. Give you very big flexibility. Thank you. 